on a new test of North Korea's weapons program. This potentially is very significant. Our Pentagon correspondent, Barbara Starr, is working the story for us. Barbara, what exactly are you learning? Well, Wolf, at this hour, the Pentagon is looking into these reports from North Korean state news service. Uh, Kim Jong-un is reported by the North Koreans to have observed today what they are calling a new tactical guided weapons firing test. Two very key words in this statement, tactical and guided. Tactical generally refers to short-range weapons, something that would not be a threat to Japan, South Korea, or the United States. But precision, guided, they call it. That means it, is, it would be some kind of weapon that is guided in a precise fashion to its target. The North Koreans are not saying very much about what kind of weapon. And, of course, all of this still has to be verified by the West that they fired anything at all indeed. Kim Jong-un also saying uh, that there were powerful warheads involved. Uh, we often see warhead-type uh, uh, devices on the front end of short range uh, artillery, rockets, that's what goes to a target. So it appears that the North Koreans are saying that they launched some kind of new tactical, uh, that is, short range weapon, not a threat to the United States. That's what the early read on this is, Wolf. Well, I want to bring in, uh, hold on for a moment, Barbara, our national security reporter, Kylie Atwood, who's also working this story for us. Uh, what are you hearing potentially, Kylie, about Kim Jong un's motivations? Well, the question here has been, is Kim Jong-un going to test a nuclear uh, weapon or going to carry out a missile test? And this is evidence that he's moving at least in that direction. Uh, in what uh, state media is saying out of North Korea today, he's inspected and directed a new tactical guided weapons test. This may not be the most provocative thing that he could have done at this moment in time, but it sure is provocative and it will uh, require a response from the White House, who has time and time again, despite the slowdown in correspondence between the U.S. and North Korea after the failed summit in Hanoi, in which neither party walked home with any wins, they have said that North Korea is no longer testing uh, its nuclear weapons or its missile program. And and this would be evidence that Kim Jong-un is pushing in that direction. And so that line will no longer uh, stand just as steady as it once did. In the aftermath of the failed summit in Hanoi, uh, Kylie, uh, is the North Korean leader deliberately right now beginning the process of uh, provoking President Trump? That's sure what it looks like, Wolf. And, and as Barbara was saying earlier, we you know, are yet to hear um, what the U.S. intelligence has said about this and how they are uh, actually you know, looking at uh, this launch and what it specifically it was, because that will matter and that will also uh, guide the U.S. response to this. There are also options that North Korea had in uh, launching satellites that are not directly tied to its nuclear program but have uh, mechanics that are tied to its nuclear program. That also would have been something that uh, administration officials told me would have solicited a lesser response from the White House uh, than a nuclear test or than a missile test. But I also think it's important to point out, Wolf, that Steve Began, which is, he's a special representative for North Korea from the State Department, uh, he's in Russia right now. And it is expected that Kim Jong-un will be heading to meet with Putin at some point over the next two weeks. That's what sources told me uh, just today from Russia. They were meeting with Steve Began, and Began was still upbeat and optimistic about getting back to the table with the North Koreans. We'll have to see how this impacts his posture. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Let me go back to Barbara Starr at the Pentagon. Uh, you're getting more information, Barbara. What else are you learning? We are indeed, Wolf. Our own Ryan Brown has just learned that both the U.S. Northern Command and U.S. Strategic Command, both those elements of the U.S. military, monitor satellites, intelligence gathering satellites 24-7. And both are saying that there was no indication of a ballistic missile test. That's important. It means that U.S. intelligence satellites did not see the infrared or the heat signature of a ballistic missile uh, lifting 
off a launch pad. So again, nothing that would uh, threaten the United States, South Korea, or Japan, but it's still extremely significant because what it does mean now, Kim Jong-un, who is no slouch in uh, crafting his strategy against the United States, has put President Trump in a bit of a box here now. The president, of course, for months has been defining the initial success against North Korea, that they have not tested any nuclear weapons. They have launched nothing. Well, now apparently they have. They've kept it below the threshold of a provocation on the level of threatening the U.S. or other countries in the region. So they keep it below that level of a provocation. Presumably this is short range, guided. It may or may not be something that's new. But that's not really what's significant here. It is the statement that Kim Jong-un has made tonight, uh, more tomorrow uh, in North Korea, that he is firing something, he's capable of firing it, he's not afraid of Donald Trump, and now that ball literally is in the president's court. He has to make a political decision how he's going to play this, what he is going to say. The U.S. feels very strongly, we've heard this from senior leaders behind the scenes, that Kim Jong-un does not want a big provocation, if you will. His aim is still to get sanctions relief. So he's not going to do anything. Nobody expects him to do anything at this point to overstep that. But by firing this weapon off, keeping it relatively low level, according to the initial reports, not a big provocation. He still tonight has put the president in the box of having to say something about it and having to, shall we say, reconfigure U.S. strategy, how they're going to deal with the North Koreans on this very key point as they go forward. Yeah, Wolf? let me go back to Kylie, because uh, Kylie, uh, clearly, even if it's not a ballistic missile at an intermediate range or a long range, it's not a nuclear test, and that's important, uh, that's good, but it is an opening shot, a new tactical guided weapon uh, that potentially uh, could represent a threat if it's used along the border with South Korea, the demilitarized zone. There are still, what, close to 30,000 U.S. troops there. That's right. And the reports coming out of North Korea are calling this a historic event, which is bolstering North Korea's combat capabilities. That is also a line that can play directly into uh, Kim Jong-un and how he's viewed domestically. As as we were talking about, you know, walking away from the Hanoi summit with President Trump, uh, Kim Jong-un didn't have any deliverables at home. So this is one way for him to cater uh, to his base in the same way that President Trump has been trying trying to cast uh, the diplomacy between the U.S. and North Korea as a win, even when there isn't any tangible movement on denuclearization by North Korea as a result of those conversations that have been going on. So right. both sides here are looking at how they can domestically play this, but they'll have to make a decision about how they play it on the world stage as well. We'll see what the reaction is from the president, Kylie and Barbara. I know you're both working sources. Uh, we'll get back to you as more information comes in. Thank you very much. Uh, right now, I want to go to our chief White House correspondent, Jim Acosta. Jim, there's a lot of breaking news unfolding. Right. Uh, but first, let me ask you about this weapons test in North Korea. So far, is the White House saying anything at all about that? Well, if the only thing they'll say right now, I talked to a White House official who said they have seen this report, uh, but they're, they're, they're not going to have any other comment about it at this time. But it does go back to this issue uh, as to how the president has been boasting in recent weeks that he's gotten Kim Jong-un under, under control, that he's gotten the North Koreans to behave themselves. Uh, this obviously flies in the face of that. Uh, and this is something that the president's going to have to deal with uh, when they try to determine whether or not to have another summit with the North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un.